Bob Bullock was born in New York in 1924 to Sieber and Harriet Bullock. His father ran barges on the Erie Canal and he had an older brother, Foreman. He grew up in Westchester County and attended Hartsdale Public School before moving to White Plains during his sophomore year. His mother taught biology at White Plains High School and he graduated from there in 1942. He attended St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York and majored in biology before the war interrupted his education. He entered the Army and was a surgical technician under Dr. Gordon Seagraves Hospital Unit, which provided surgical support for Chinese injured during the opening of the Burma Road. The unit was considered possibly the first MASH unit in the armed services, and Dr. Seagraves wrote two books about their experience, both of which were typed by Bob. When he got out of the Army, Bob attended the University of Connecticut on the GI Bill and majored in entomology while working as a lab assistant in the zoology department to help pay his expenses. He originally wanted to be a surgeon, but says that organic chemistry took care of that. His interest in entomology had been sparked while working as a camp counselor at a children's hospital during summer camp, when he was assigned a child who liked to take the wings off of flies and then flush the flies down the toilet. Bob, ever resourceful and in perhaps his first teaching job, redirected the child's interest into collecting insects and learning about their habits. Bob received his master's degree in 1950, the same year he met his wife, Jean, at a campus party. She was a typist in the animal husbandry department and had grown up on a fruit farm in Germantown, New York. They married two years later, and after receiving his PhD in entomology in 1954, they moved to Honduras and did research on insect management for bananas for the United Fruit Company. He stayed there until 1961 when a job opportunity as associate entomologist opened in Fort Pierce at the Indian River Field Laboratory, now known as the Indian River Research and Education Center. He worked under Mort Cohen, who headed up the Citrus Research Station. His first assignment was working on the Fuller Rose Beetle, which was a root destroyer of citrus and a big problem at the time. It was the first in a long line of pest control problems that he would research over his 35-year career, working to help find solutions for Florida citrus growers. He taught growers how to reduce weevil, nematode, and beetle populations, and considered growers as his stakeholders. Any type of research topic, just to show you how highly uh, respected he was by the growers, even if it didn't re relate to pest control and insects, they'd often call Bob Bullock to find out who else to call. I mean, he was he's really a, a legend in his own right in that regard. Bob was one of the first to try and determine the appropriate amount of chemicals to apply as well as the best time and place to apply them. He went out of his way to show the growers the most efficient methods to use for whichever chemical they were applying. In addition, he concentrated on trying to find potential biological controls whenever possible. His research laid a lot of the basic foundation for what we call today modern integrated pest management. He was known as the grower's teacher for his hands-on knowledge of citrus production and his ability to give the grower a practical response and a solution to the problems put before him. He was always accessible to the growers. They'd call him on weekends at night. They feel very comfortable doing that. Bob was a working man's type researcher. Um, Peter McClure one time said to the scientific community, give us research that we can pull behind our tractor, meaning give us some common sense research, research that we can apply tomorrow in our grows. And that was Bob's philosophy. Although he was a scientific researcher and had numerous published papers, his passion was to be hands-on in the grove rather than writing research papers. He was a sought-after speaker due to his witty remarks and wry delivery, and other scientists would always make a point to try to visit with Bob when they were in town. Within five minutes of meeting with them, Bob would have them out in the grove talking about pest management. He was the first to work on modifying aircraft to allow the aerial application of a number of pesticides for citrus, collaborating with Chuck Stone at Southeastern Aerial to create and place nozzles on the trailing edge of the aircraft wings, enabling a more economical low volume spray. I was a pilot, beginning to be a pilot in 1961, and working with Southeastern Aero, we, we worked together heavily on the aerial application 
of pesticides and fungicides for the first time fixed wing aircraft. And I think that's one of Bob's greatest contributions to, to this whole growing area. In addition, he collaborated with a number of his peers to modify the application techniques for various chemicals, including Temic and Admire, so that these chemicals would not adversely affect the environment. Bob has also traveled extensively to other countries to collaborate, learn, and share his knowledge with other scientists. He returned to China in 1986 under Eisenhower's Farmer to Farmer, People to People program, in which he worked with tropical fruit crops. He worked in Egypt under the United States Volunteer Overseas Community Assistance Program, which provided funding for specialists to go to third world countries and provide agricultural and research assistance. He also has spoken at various International Citrus Congress conventions discussing proper application techniques of chemicals and evaluations of biological controls. Bob retired in 1999, and in typical Bob style, he left everyone with a smile. I, I remember doing his uh, retirement uh, over at uh, the IFA Center in, in Fort Pierce. I was the center director there at the time. Um, he jumped up on the table and in the middle of his retirement and he had on a t the t-shirt that he had worn when he took the job with the University of Florida when his original t-shirt and he said I bet there's none of you in this room that can wear the original t-shirt now that you wore when you took your job <laughs> and you know I mean, that's, a, that's classic Bob Bullock. He continues to work as a consultant and enjoy his research. He taught classes up until last year when he had to have a hip replacement. He taught science labs, general physics, chemistry and biology at Golden Rule Academy as well as returning to his roots with summer camps where he supervised bug collecting classes such as the 4-H Bugaboo Camp. Yet with all of this, a little known fact about Bob and one that is almost unimaginable in his line of work is the fact that Bob is colorblind and can't see reds or greens. He knows what type of pest he is looking at because he has memorized its pattern. In 2008, Bob was inducted as an honorary member of the Florida State Horticultural Society, one of the greatest honors society can bestow. This honor recognizes members who have rendered a special meritorious service to the society and to the advancement of horticulture in Florida. Over a 35-year career, Dr. Bob Bullock was always available to help the grower with pest management concerns, research, collecting data and creating unique adaptations that would help solve growers' problems in the field. The scientific community is made up of a lot of folks that are really dedicated to science, and I don't mean to demean them in any way, but Bob was dedicated to science and he was also dedicated to coming up with practical solutions with, with problems that we had to deal with every day. If you look at his body of work, all of his papers, they were practical solutions to day-to-day -day problems that we had in the citrus industry. That, that's a dedication. He genuinely cared about the growers. As far as he was concerned, they were partners and in it for the long haul, and the growers knew that. So whenever anyone had a production or pest management question, it was always, ask Bob. Well, today it's our turn, and we'd like to ask Bob to join us as the 163rd member of the Florida Citrus Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Dr. Bob Bullock.